Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. My name is Dogbot333, and welcome back to Tartaran 4, the New Order, Last Days of Europe, as the Central Siberian Federation. Last video, oh, we started working on our foreign policy stuff. We're probably going to go ahead and align with the OFN. Decrease spear influence the best we can. We have about 60 days to do so. And then we're going to have a long fucking time to wait. For 69. Hee hee. Keep decreasing spear influence. We can open exports to China. do that. Um, research slot, let's do anti-tank. Jesus Christ, the spear influence is growing at an insane fucking rate. Wells Unified Okay, peaceful unification with Wales. I haven't seen that before. I, I've seen them do it with, do it with uh, the Scots. Hmm. But the Welsh, I haven't seen that before. That's interesting. Yeah, the corporations are not happy. Proof academic base, wonderful. Continue to, to uh, decrease. Decrease this influence even more, and then we'll figure out in 15 days who our trade partner is. We'll decrease a little more. Oh no! Ah, well, shit. Central Siberian Federation draws closer to America. Today, the Central Siberian Federation announced that after a brief scuffle between the Med Corporation and Siberian Phoenix, a settlement has been reached. The Siberian Economic Minister, spread eking from Nova Siberia, declared that the prime economic interest of the Central Siberian Federation would lie in the West. Phoenix, non producing empire, has won the bid for an official state of support, will now lead its way in trade with the OFN. Naturally, this will not heavily draw the Central Siberian Federation closer to America and the influx of American and Canadian goods and media. While spirits within the Federation are high and the economy recovering, who knows what this economic entanglement will eventually mean for this nascent state. Will they spend dollars in Novosibirsk? Let's see what the Twin Eagles. Across the Pacific, America enticingly beckons to us. Among the three great superpowers currently manipulating politics globally, the U.S. has shown itself to be the most stable of the three. Like ourselves, they recognize the benefits that business can bring and utilize such industrial strength to become one of the most powerful nations on Earth even before the Second World War. There are those who wouldn't consider us as democratic as, say, the old Central Siberian Republic once was. The United States has demonstrated a willingness in the past to support such governments regardless provide Ided that they are working against Germany or Japan. We should exploit this by reaching out and seeing what deals can be made. Okay. Beautiful. Man. We 
I'm kind of bummed about. Probably Doka not winning. Or not working out. The Twin Eagles. Beautiful. Now let's discuss an Arctic partnership. Though relatively underutilized from a trade perspective, the Arctic region offers unique benefits for those around it, including ourselves. For Russia, not only is it a viable trade route for the week in which we can ship goods to the Atlantic now that we've lost the former Leningrad, but also is an avenue through which we can exert our own political power and potentially align some nations with our own. We should reach out to other Arctic countries and see what economic partnerships can be made between our industrialists and theirs. All right. And that works for me. Um, Omsk is hanging in there right now, it seems. Interestingly enough. Discuss Arctic Partnership. <clears throat> we have today been informed that the Americans are ready and willing to continue discussions on contracts for military supplies and services previously raised. This is, we are told, excellent news. Many industries in and around both Novosibirsk as well as other cities with significant manufacturing capabilities stand to gain tremendously from any such contracts that are eventually signed. Those same industrials have been quick to communicate the economic benefits of a state as well beyond simple economic growth. Such benefits could extend, but may not be limited to, Increased employment, expansion of national productive capabilities, infusion of hard currency, additional foreign investment in construction, and much more besides. There is much excitement f within the state, within businesses and government alike, for what is yet to come. Although any potential contract is not yet finalized, many within our government consider it only a matter of time until an agreement is reached and the benefits realized. Is a deal on the horizon? Next, let's do a bipolar partnership. At last, we have taken necessary steps towards decisively aligning ourselves with a powerful Pacific government and deepening the power association between us, finally creating a partnership within the, with them certain to stand the test of time. While this decision came with no shortage of controversy from those who had favored a deal with the other power, it is done and there's nothing they can do about it. There is little reason for them to be better either. We have reaped great rewards from our improved trade with our chosen partner and the benefits have been seen by everyone that matters. There we go. Our overtures to the Americans are on the verge of complete success, and negotiations have reached a point where all that remains is to prose and hopefully receive final acceptance. Diplomatic missives are currently being prepared by a joint group of state officials and industry representatives, aimed at extending an offer to America to construct a sizable industrial complex focused on production of military goods and material within our country. If successful, the benefits to us will be considerable. While we cannot be absolutely sure of American agreement to said missives, our experts have informed us that such acceptance is like, highly likely in the long term. Though they do caution that it is highly likely that the Americans will request additional stipulations. It is yet unknown what those stipulations can entail, but an opportunity must be explored to be realized, and we will do so. Very soon the message will be sent, and we must only wait a reply. Surely they will accept. Hmm. We received a response from America, and they have agreed to build factories to, for us, but on one condition, we send their our own troops to American military posts. The Americans argue that their troops need a break, and we could easily provide that. More factories are always a good thing, but sending our men to a distant continent may not be worth it. Having our men go to locations such as Australia, Iceland, and others will place them far from home if war were to arise. The loss of manpower may be too great, even if it is just for a few months, so we must judge what is worth more. Instead, we may, may be better just trade weapons instead. While factories would be better in the long run, trading weapons may be a more agreeable deal. What should be a response? Now those military factories are worth it. It's only 500 manpower. It's not that big a deal. Hmm. Okay. Let's 
Do some drop tanks. Volunteer to go overseas, they said. It would be good lunar experience, they said. He'd get to explore exotic places, they said. <sighs> what a lord of horseshit. Here he was, struggling in 40 degree heat, in a land where it seemed everything was out to get him, from spiders to the snakes, with little to do but wait until his shift was over. They were stuck with him on the godforsaken continent, hardly seemed much better. <sighs> Vasily, is this what you expected when you volunteered for a tropical paradise? Turning his head back, Ivan... Anov glared at the offending soldier. Corporal Fedorov was taking this all in good stride. The sole man to not be completely miserable, and even flip had the n nerve to joke. <sighs> Suppressing a rebuke, Vasily's eyes flickered to a group of Australians approaching them, shouting at them with strange accents. Fedorov, what are they saying? The corporal took a moment to listen and expressed a grin before replying. He said to watch out for the drop bears, Sergeant. What the fuck is a drop bear? Oh, you gotta watch out for those fucking drop bears, man, I'm telling you. You know, you're... You're living your life in Australia as well as you can in a, when you live in a country where everything wants to fucking kill you. And then all of a sudden, poom, drop that bear. Fucks you up. The mega corporations of Caesar Petty Bickerings and the state has to declared a victor. With our economy's future coming into focus, we can begin to take a serious look at the big picture. All in all, our domestic situation has greatly improved, and with luck, things will continue to go as well. With our economic, uh, with our economy and swing and our workforce bringing a sigh of relief, we can put this whole incident behind us. Wonderful. Um, prototype missile. Okay. Let's do this. Let's do worker training. And poverty stuff. And now all we can really do is wait. And holy crap, we're going to have to do a lot of waiting, won't we? Because we have to wait until 69 to be done. Wait, actually... Fuck, okay, we can't influence them until 69. Well, that doesn't mean we can't start. Increase military pressures. Man, wouldn't this be wacky if we could actually manage to pull this off? You know what? A man can dream, can he? I mean, we'll wait and see. Hmm? Nope. That was worth a shot. It really was. Alas, we just have to sit and do nothing now. Eh. Let's do some organic units. Uh, next, let's do probably hire some foreign instructors. God knows that's going to be important. Drop tanks. Get working on some basic jet fighters, I'm thinking. Trying to modernize this? Okay. There we go. Probably very wise to go ahead and start trading with them then. I've seen this new one. Uh, eh, you know what? Ah, childish fantasy. All of it. Who gives a damn?
What is Japan up to? Fragmentist, reunified Kazakhstan. No oh, way, hey, that's like us. Better agricultural methods, beautiful. For this bread, we thank thee. Let's go ahead and do an academic base and import some heavy machinery. I can get a new army. Nice and ready. Let's go ahead and do... Nestor Kozin. Why not? Um, what can we give this guy? Um... I don't know. Apparently we can't give him much. We'll get rid of this. We'll do uh, independence for UAE. Interesting. Offensive line. France goes into isolation. You know, I can't bl say I blame him. Fort Jungle Force Mountain. Congrats for finishing up your damn damn. Let's get some bit more. Let's get some better motorized. Expand state welfare programs. Maybe some jet engines. Maybe some jet fighters. Honestly, might as well get working on next gen while we're here. Invest in some construction? I think we might do that. Def Antonio. Old Man Salazar's dead. Feels bad to be him. Feels bad, man. You're a league. Oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Omsk went and died it again. Feels bad, Omsk. Feels fucking bad. Well, the front is looking a hell of a lot better right now. I'll, I'll, I'll say that much. Baker is one. Very interesting. Let's get some support companies.
Move onwards. Trade with Ch Japan. I was about to say China. I don't know why I was about to say China. Keep applying pressure. Improve loyalty all around, best we can. There we are. I carry saw the Vorkuta Provisional Authority in the north. Middle East beckons. Oh, there we go. Following a series of successful te field tests, it's been determined that the S-25 missile system is ready for deployment. The first anti-air installation is nearing completion on the outskirts of Novosibirsk. Testing shows of new missile to be far better at locking onto and tracking targets and improved ability to adjust course mid-flight, resulting in greater number of simulated hits. Additionally, improvements to missile speed have greatly in expanded the response time of anti-air emplacements, while the extended range has allowed them to project a much wider zone of control in the skies above our cities. Though Nova Siberia was never reached by the terror bombings that plagued Valencia our west, our people still live in constant fear of dark days, days of planes filled our skies and bombs bloating out the sun. We shall fear, fear no longer fear if any enemy plane tries to approach our people. They shall be answered with swift and deadly vengeance. Russia sky belongs to no one but us. Let them come. Beautiful. Some improved jet fighters. And then do we dare keep going go further? I don't think so quite yet. Let's get some advanced drop tanks though. These guys looking even finer than they are right now. Improve that pressure. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Pressure. Pushing down on me. Pushing down on you. And say the song. Under pressure. All right. Welcome to a. Uh, Sing along with Dogboat, I guess. I'm really just kind of killing time right now while we wait for 69. Hee <laughs> hee. Um. Crocodile. Lutuchaya Lissitsta. You might want to do that, get some intercept guys. That might be good enough, we'll do it. Oh my god, we are out of manpower. Let's uh, chill out for a bit then. We're still very low on manpower. Dear god. Let's just keep putting on the pressure militarily. There, under pressure. <laughs> it's a madness world for people in the streets. Doom ba ba bay. Doom ba ba bay. Dee da do. Dee da do. That's okay, it's for terror knowing what this world is about. Watching some good friends screaming, let me out. But tomorrow gets me higher. Pressure on people, people on the streets. Da da da. Dido da ba do. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, I don't know what else to fucking do right now, so I'm singing. I apologize to anyone else who, you know, endure this. We'll build more in these areas, actually. Let's move this back up, because we're already pretty close to finishing that off. 
Um, scientific mechanization. We'll do... That'll increase our GDP. We'll go for it. And I think... Let's not fly too close to the sun here. We'll do some resource extraction. There we are. And I don't think we'll even need to worry about the whole reunification thing. Because honestly, we're about to take the shit over. without even needing to fire a shot. Well, actually, something I realized. And this will be good, actually, to do. Get a little bit more manpower. They're doing the next generation of troops. Harold Wilson, a re-elected Prime Minister. Red flag still flies. Over jolly old England. Right, right. Hmm. And so far for that, pe for total peaceful unification. This hope has a solid amount of stuff going for it, actually. Interestingly enough. Poverty relief programs and worker training sound just like what the doctor ordered. And we are ready right as soon as the new year comes around. <laughs> oh my god, this is so fucking broken. I love it. Port of Magadan has been captured. Beautiful. Oh. That is so fucking broken, I love it! Get some better jet fighters going. We'll hold off on unifying just yet, just so I can get some more political power built up. I'm gonna be neck next on the. Briatia is probably gonna be good. Probably Cheetah. Maybe more actually, after. Vertical envelopment. Oh yeah, this is broken. It is great. A union at what cost? Rise like lions after slumber. In invanquishable number. Shake your chains to earth like dew. We are many. They are few. Please don't copyright strike me. Please do not copyright strike me. Don't do it. Please don't. Woo! Yeah! Cable Street Avenged. Jalio. All that good stuff. Uh, resource extraction, why not? I mean, it's probably a few reasons why not, but I can't. Um, I'm just gonna do them anyway. Um, improved jet fighter. Let's get working on some strat bombers. Let's do what heavy aircraft. 
do the heavy jet engines. Uh, Magadon, do all that. Serbia sides with Germany, they remain bound in chains. The Reich Protectorate Prince Jugendland. Ah. Poor fellas. Ocor. Northern Siberia. We have a free dockyard, so we'll build some convoys. Why not? And if we want to, we can... I am so fucking curious right now. Could we go ahead and... That says until 1969. That implies that we could take over the front right now if we wanted to. Or not right. Or any of these guys right now if we really wanted to. And if we can do that, holy shit, how broken is this nation? Oh man. They cannot resist. Literally, they cannot resist for corporate buyout power is insane. Our economy is going great right now. Iberia abolishes the Iberian Council. Another step back. Yeah, Iberia is not going to be long for this world, are they? Germany sees Mauritius in Reunion. How worse can it get? I mean, a noticeable amount worse in, uh... <sighs> oh, the old Reichstadt. I'm going Corp Aldan. And I think it's time to reunify Siberia. I can exert influence in Kazakhstan. Or try to, we'll see what ends up happening. And we'll, you always have the old uh, Siberian Mandate, stuff like that. Let's do it. After years of struggle, the unthinkable has been achieved. The vastness of Siberia has been reunified under one flag. Securing much of Russia has been no easy feat. Secure our hold, we have had to fight off every devil of Russia's past from monarchist fanatics to fascist thugs to Soviet holdouts. We have vanquished them all, and we now stand triumphant as the masters of the East and the rightful government of all of Russia. The conquest of Siberia has taken its toll on us. Russia remains fractured, but even now we are already one of the largest nations on Earth. Administrating a territory this massive requires a strong and stable government. We should take this opportunity to secure our hold and ensure that our administration is prepared for the task that lie ahead. The final reunification with the West is near, one way or another. We will not be caught unprepared. Oh, Nikolai has hung in there. Onto an uncertain feature. There you go, the wonders. R.I.P. Oh, how we'll miss ya. Pokrishkin tossed the report onto his desk in disgust. It was a general overview on the situation in the far eastern Siberia, and Rini through it had dashed all traces of optimism he had about the region. It wasn't all bad, to be fair. Controlling the port town of Magadan finally gave him access to the sea. With a little investment, Irtuts could become a major economic and industrial hub. But aside from a few scattered bright spots like those at the port, had nothing but bad news. The Far East had always been difficult to administer, even for a united Russian nation. Now he had to attempt the same task with far less resources than the Empire or the Union had been able to field. And on top of everything else, there was a main topic of the port. Partisans. Based on early reports alone, Pakrishkin's security experts were telling him that there's no less than eight organized radical terrorist organizations operating in the Far East, 
possibly as many as a dozen. They came in all stripes, fascists, communists, monarchists, anarchists, zealots, cossacks, separatists, and more besides. The only reason they had already collapsed the entire East into partisan warfare was because they spent as much time fighting each other as the central government. The report warns that this might not be the case forever. The longer they are allowed to exist, the more likely it is that like-minded groups will form a common front against the newly formed Russian Federation. This cannot be allowed to happen, but Grishkin picked up the phone and started dialing that number. If consulting Central Siberia had taught him anything, it was that there was only one way to deal with radicals. They were so wrapped up in their own meaningless theories and ideologies that they barely lived in the real world. That made them too dangerous to tolerate. They would be dragged out of their holes and brought into the light where the people of Russia could see them for what they were. Not brave partisans, but desperate terrorists with no place in the new Russia. There is no room for mercy here. Heroes do die. Let's consolidate with new territories. It's almost impossible to explain just how vast and sparsely populated Siberia is. Outside of a few urban centers like Irkutsk and Novosibirsk, millions of square kilometers of wilderness and scattered vill villages. This is especially true of the newly integrated region, eastern regions. Even the Tsars and the Soviets never fully extended their administration over this region. The eastern warlords never came close to matching what they did accomplish. This has left us with the task of integrating this territory has been left to us. The urban centers of the east will form a nucleus of a new administrative web that will cover all of eastern Siberia. Every town and village, every isolated hamlet, all of them will be assigned to districts and administrative regions, and each will have administrators and politicians appointed to oversee them and represent them within our government. No more will the Far East be an isolated backwater forgotten by the Russian government. It is an integral part of the Russian nation, and it will be treated as such. Good shit. Um, let's get working on the new generation of civilian construction. And maybe some enhanced industrial administration. I saw my boy LBJ run, run again in uh, the US. That's my boy. Oh. Decreases in poverty. Beautiful. A toast to our economists. We introduce the idea of social security. U.S. Japanese talks begin. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens. Do me proud, Johnson. Do me proud. Let's reaffirm our commitments. With sudden expansion of our territories and our associated advance on the world stage, eyes across the world are studying us, watching for our next move and see to see what it signals. We must show them that we are still the same government that they have learned to trust. Our pending reunification of Russia has not changed any of our agreements, and we are still happy to do business with the other nations of the world. The acquisition of Russia's large, longest coastline and several developed ports has made the matter of trade much easier. The nations and companies who have already invested into Russia are excitedly offering to expand operations further. Meanwhile, from Tokyo to Washington, we have gained the attention of governments and business alike. It's time to double down our message while everyone is watching. Russia is open for business. We might just have to do military invention. Kazakhstan. That's what I'm thinking. Um, yeah. Offensive lines. Prep for all that noise. Civil war in Yemen. Oh, who would have thought? Who would have thunk it? Instability in the Middle East. A quaint idea. Reaffirm our commitments. Hmm. Let's go ahead and root out the remnants. The Russian people are grateful to have a strong democratic government ruling over them at last, but there are still a few troublemakers who wish to overthrow us. 
these various extremists, whether they be fascists or communists or anarchists or monarchists, are all united by their hatred for our government. These radicals held low enough profiles to be missed by the first round of crackdowns and arrests we made whenever we defeat their bosses, but now they've returned to make trouble and we must put a stop to it. There's no reason to assume that what worked before won't work again. Combination of surveillance, sabotage, arrest, and anti-radical propaganda will be enough to cripple the various terrorist societies that have cropped up across Siberia and turn the fir public firmly against their divisive message. There we go. Oman rises up. Oh man. Creeper. Aw oh, man. So we're up in the I'm singing I'm I'm singing a fucking Minecraft parody song. What is wrong with me? Ooh. The Iberian Civil War is breaking out. Anyway. A truck rolled down the dirt road through the forest, jostling the men inside. A few smoked in silence, filling the back of their trucks with the smell of cigarettes. Some slept, their snores inaudible over the rumbling engine. Fyodor was seated at the rear of a truck, staring out the window, while next to him Lev continued jabbering incessantly. <laughs> hey Fyodor, how do you know when he killed a communist? I don't know, Lev, how? <laughs> when he starts to bleed out, he calls his own blood reactionary and tells it to read more theory. <laughs> Lev laughed at his own joke, though Fyodor was unamused. Seeing this, Lev tried again. How do you know when he killed a fascist? Fyodor glared at him. When he starts to bleed out, he calls you a Jew bastard and says his blood is too strong to leave his body. Once more, Lev cackled at his own wit, lack of wit. And once more, Fyodor remained silent. When Lev finished laughing, Fyodor spoke. Have you ever killed anyone, Lev? Lev looked at him, confused. M maybe. I I fired my gun in combat, but I I'm not sure. Well, have you watched anyone bleed out? No. Well, I have. I've watched five men die. A communist, two anarchists, a fascist, and a Cossack. No, none of them died. None of them talked about race or theory when they were dying. They all just cried for their mothers. Man. Looks like we're coming up on election season. It is no secret that the co-rulers of our nation do not get along. Public Pekrishkin and Shukshkin present a unified front, but it is well known that the men have agreed on little for years. The two men have been able to set aside their differences and cooperate up until now, but with a recent acquisition of Eastern Siberia and the prospect of national reunification growing greater every day, their disagreements have become too great to ignore. The co-rulers have agreed that the only way to settle this is to have the Russian people decide. Shukshkin is pre campaigning on a platform of reform and democracy pledging to create a truly equal and free Russian federation with a government elected by and subservient to the people before all else. Pokrishkin has opted for a more conservative approach, stating his commitment to democracy, but reiterating that Russia is in need of a strong government capable of uniting and defending its people. Only time will tell which message is more popular. Oh man. Election time. Yep, the Spanish Civil War. The second Spanish Civil War, I should say. The Iberian Wars. In a war, there are no winners or losers. Only victims. Michel del Castillo. Up yours, Dusk. And Italy is sieged. Okay, I'll go ahead and save real quick. Um, elections. They struck at midnight. The raid proceeded by the blinding light of flares and scattered around the buildings as the soldiers sprang the trap. Machine guns sprayed death, 
barely a feet off the ground as the infantry sprang into action, pushing towards the structure in a textbook assault. Ducking into cover, just before a dozen slugs were to tore through the space that he had formerly occupied, the air went out of his chest. He took a few minutes, deep breaths, and blinked once his eyes. Once, twice, three times. Good enough. Firing a few bullets at the general direction of the structure, the sergeant rolled left to join the rest of his unit, already going through the motions of a battle drill. The screaming, shooting, and dying lasted all five minutes before white handkerchiefs went up. The black-shirted figures stepped out in surrender, bodies surrounding the once picturesque cabin. As he counted losses and took in sight, Ivanov gave the sorry-looking black shirts a glare of contempt for all their enthusiasm for violence. He'd seen anarchists handle themselves better than these jack-booted thugs. Looters and criminals did not make an army. Well, uh, before we read this event, we're going to have to cut it here, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you as always for watching. If you liked this video, leave a like. If not, feel free to dislike. If you want to see more of this content in the future, go ahead and hit the sub button for uploads every weekday, as well as every Saturday. If you have any comments, feedback, concerns, anything sort, leave in the comment section below. I read all the comments I get and appreciate any all feedback you might have from me. If you want to chat, play games, do anything sort, check out my Discord. If you want to see me do sort of live, I have a Twitch you can check out. And if you want to send a few bucks my way every month, I have a Patreon, all of which are down the link below. Thank you as always for watching, ladies and gentlemen. My name has been Dogbot333, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.